Vitamin D plays an essential role in keeping our bones, teeth and muscles healthy. Naturally, we obtain our daily requirements from our diet and sun exposure. However, deficiency may occur amongst individuals with darker skin and those experiencing inadequate sun exposure. So, if you want to learn more about vitamin D, the symptoms of deficiency and how we replace it, keep watching. My name is Dr. Hart Pinto and in this series we will review all areas of nutrition, helping you become a happier, healthier you. At JHP Medical we make weekly information videos designed to increase your awareness and help you better understand your medical condition. So if you find this video helpful, subscribe, click the notification bell and the like button to support us in helping you. What is vitamin D and why is it so important? Vitamin D is essential for the regulation of two minerals, calcium and phosphate. Therefore, vitamin D plays an imperative role in maintaining healthy bones, teeth and muscles. Vitamin D additionally plays a regulatory role in the body's immune system. However, the mechanism of how vitamin D influences the immune system is not well understood. However, researchers have demonstrated the development of autoimmune inflammatory diseases with low levels of vitamin D. Vitamin D is present in two forms, ergocalciferol, vitamin D2, and cholecalciferol, vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is the most potent formation produced by your skin cells when exposed to sunlight, but also consumed within the diet through animal-based foods. The best dietary sources of vitamin D are oily fish including salmon and sardines, herring and mackerel, or cod liver oil tablets, red meat, liver, egg yolks, or fortified foods, including margarine and breakfast cereals. So what causes deficiency? Vitamin D deficiency is common, estimated to affect between 40 and 80% of the UK population, and regularly affects more than 40% in other countries. The most common cause of vitamin D deficiency is a lack of adequate sun exposure. Our skin naturally produces up to 90% of our required vitamin D when exposed to sunlight. However, environmental factors may impede vitamin D production via this method. UVB sunlight during winter months is limited for those living in the Northern Hemisphere. Some countries have more variable weather conditions, further restricting the availability of direct sunlight. Darker skin types contain higher concentrations of the pigment melanin. Melanin plays a role in sun damage protection. However, the increased pigmentation also makes the skin less efficient in vitamin D production. Clothes that cover most of the body and face are also problematic. Consequentially, sunlight is unable to reach our vitamin D producing skin, limiting its production. And finally, as we age, our body's ability to produce vitamin D reduces. This is compounded by an increased desire to wear more clothes, spend more time indoors, and develop medical conditions such as liver and kidney disease, all of which will influence our vitamin D production. Certain medications can also affect our vitamin D levels in different ways. Orlistat causes a limitation in gastrointestinal absorption of vitamin D. Additionally, other medications can promote the breakdown of vitamin D within the body, these can include antacids, cholestyramine, a medication used for gallstone prevention, corticosteroids, rifampicin, a type of antibiotic, thiazide diuretics, digoxin and calcium channel blockers, anti-epileptic medications, and highly active antiretroviral treatments. What are the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency? Children with vitamin D deficiency develop a condition called rickets. Here the deficiency results in inadequate calcification of bones, meaning bones are softer with a tendency to bend, creating the classical bow-legged appearance. Additionally, children may experience bone pain and muscle weakness. Adults also experience symptoms of bone pain and muscle weakness, however a mature skeleton means the rickets do not develop. Instead, bones become weakened in a condition called osteomalacia, increasing the risk of fracture. How will my doctor diagnose vitamin D deficiency? Diagnosis of vitamin D deficiency is via a blood test. Your risk of developing the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency depend on your circulating levels. 
Sufficient levels are greater than 50 nanomoles per litre. Inadequate levels are patients at 25 to 50 nanomoles per litre. And deficiency is amongst patients with less than 25 nanomoles per litre. So what about treatment? Where your doctor identifies you have less than sufficient levels of vitamin D, they'll recommend replacement. Oral supplementation with vitamin D3 is the treatment of choice for most people. In cases requiring rapid correction, such as those displaying symptoms due to severe deficiency, a loading regime of 300,000 units is necessary. This large dose should be divided over several weeks, for example 50,000 units once a week for six weeks. For those with less severe deficiency, there is no requirement for this loading regime. Therefore, you'll be likely prescribed supplementation in line with a maintenance regime. Maintenance regimes require supplementation with between 800 and 2,000 units daily. Routine monitoring of vitamin D levels is not always needed. Some doctors, however, may consider rechecking your vitamin D levels at three to six months. Additionally, your doctor needs to review your calcium levels one month after commencing treatment, due to the complex interplay between vitamin D and calcium levels. Should the circumstance arise where your primary care physician or GP struggles to regain control of your vitamin D deficiency, a specialist referral is required. So how can we prevent vitamin D deficiency? Given the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency in the Northern Hemisphere, current UK guidance advises all adults to consider taking vitamin D supplementation of 400 units, particularly during autumn and winter months. It is advisable for older individuals, 65 and above, and anyone at increased risk for developing vitamin D deficiency, to consider supplementation with 400 units daily throughout the year. Fortunately, vitamin D is available over the counter at these doses and is therefore readily available for everyone. Lifestyle changes are also an essential means to maintain a healthy level of vitamin D and prevent deficiency. Most people should produce a healthy amount of vitamin D when exposed to sunlight, particularly during sunnier months. Longer durations of sun exposure is necessary amongst those with darker skin. Excessive sun exposure, however, can be dangerous and has an association with the development of skin cancers. So please take care. Dietary changes, aiming to incorporate the foods that we've discussed earlier, can further naturally fortify your vitamin D. So why not give that a try? Is it possible to take too much vitamin D? Yes, taking too much vitamin D can be dangerous. Excess vitamin D can result in a buildup of calcium in the body known as hypercalcemia. Bone and joint pain, muscle spasms, irregular heartbeats, nausea, vomiting and confusion are all symptoms of hypercalcemia. High levels of calcium also increase your risk of developing renal stones. Ouch! Therefore, you should avoid supplementation with anything more than 4,000 units per day unless prescribed by your doctor. So what about prognosis? Once identified, vitamin D deficiencies are easily treatable with oral supplementation. Therefore, it's imperative to follow your doctor's advice on oral supplementation and any lifestyle changes. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and interact by giving us a thumbs up or leaving a comment down below. This supports the growth of our channel and helps educate many more people about their medical conditions. Of course, this video does not provide individual medical advice and is intended for informational purposes only. Do not consider this as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Do not ignore professional medical advice in seeking treatment because of something you've heard here. If you believe you may have a medical emergency, immediately call your doctor or ambulance service. Thank you for watching, see you next time.